Hello, and welcome to chapter one of the book club on the McDougall program for maximum weight loss. Okay, so this book is by John McDougall, and he is a medical doctor, and he published this book in 1994. So I was in high school back then. <laughs> and though I'm not so sure I would have followed all the advice in this book back then, a lot of me wishes that I had known a lot of the, this information much sooner in my life. But at least I know it now, right? Okay, so I think I'm gonna try and do this without my sunglasses on. I can read pretty well close up without glasses on and um, I just feel like it's so lack of being connected and personal with my sunglasses on. But I do have really sensitive eyes, so if I'm squinting too much, the glasses are gonna go back on. Okay, so let's jump into it. Chapter one, never be hungry or fat again. That sounds really good, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna go over some of the main points. I'm gonna read some sections from the book. I've been busy taking notes and looking at it and in a different lens, thinking about making videos for it. And um, I also wanted to say really quickly too, I haven't introduced myself. My name is Rhiannon and I'm glad you're here. And I'm outside filming. Um, it's prettier facing this direction, but the way the sun is moving, I'm afraid that we're gonna get some really harsh light and I didn't want it to be bad for me, but now I'm almost thinking this is worse. So I might even change around at some point in the video. And that's why I see it change. Also, like I said, I'm outside. Noises, kids, wind chime next to me. Things might go off, but in my house, it's just really hard. My husband's working from home. Three kids are home. I homeschool anyway, but with the whole pandemic, everybody shut in. It's just kind of like the walls are closing in on us. So I'd prefer to be outside. And I hope that the sound quality is okay. All right, that all said and aside, chapter one, never be hungry or fat again. Okay, so imagine having to decide between being physically attractive or being able to eat. Well, that's the conflict facing most people to every day. Ooh, I read that really poorly. Well, that's the conflict facing most people every day. You are told by countless diet doctors and weight loss gurus that in order to lose weight, you must control one of your most basic and powerful instincts, hunger. Okay, now, little side note, a couple times in my life I've gone without food. Um, one time I did a 26 day juice fast. I just couldn't make it to the end. I set out to do a whole month. Um, I began to obsessively think about nothing but eating. And I realized that there was no point in going on any further because it was driving me to a point of insanity. All I could think about was eating. Like, I wasn't functioning. All I could think about was eating. Um, and then I'll have to make a video on this someday. Um, it just gives me a lot of anxiety. My heart's racing as I mention it right now. Um, I had a horrible, horrible pregnancy in 2012. Um, my son, beautiful little boy, worth every bit of it, but at the same time when I endured the horrible pregnancy, it was horrible, awful as an understatement, and I starved a big majority of it because of hyperemesis gravidarum, which is a um, fancy way of saying puking nonstop your whole pregnancy. Um, or a big chunk of it and for me it was all almost the entire part of it so I had to be on a feeding tube thing through um, TPN so it was like a, through the veins the, the, the line went in through here a pick line so I mean it was really bad and I literally felt my muscles being eaten in my legs it was horrifying and I was hungry though I had really almost no appetite because of being co constantly in a state of nausea but I did find myself constantly thinking about eating, but then feeling nauseous because I thought about eating. So that was another realm of, you know, of hell. But I will agree, it is one of our absolute most basic and powerful instincts, hunger. Okay, that sad note aside, <laughs> um, he kind of goes into just about that kind of thing. And then the truth is, you cannot maintain a diet that keeps you hungry. You just can't keep it up. One of your most powerful instincts is to avoid starvation. The only diet that can be sustained by anyone is a diet that allows you to eat until you're full and at the same time promotes weight loss and good health. So 
I think that's really a valid point. I thought it was, you know, kind of a duh, but at the same time, it's really worth hearing. So anybody who's on an amazing diet that they're dropping 20 pounds in one month, fantastic, but can they maintain that? And then what are the long-term consequences kind of thing? So, all right, so he's saying, you know, hey, it sounds too good to be true. They've been, we've been trained by so many awful hard diets, et cetera, et cetera, to believe that we really can't and we're doomed kind of a thing. So, um, he's saying here, you know, but you've learned that you can't start forever. So people have done it. They've dropped weight. They've done well, but they just can't start forever. Eventually you go back, um, you break out of this straight jacket of hunger is how he calls it. And you go back to your habitual way of eatings, eatings. He didn't say eatings. That was me being grammatically incorrect. <laughs> Eventual way of eating. Then you regain the weight that you lost through great suffering and in less time than it took to take it off. Been there, done that. The exceedingly difficult task of subduing hunger causes many people to give up any hope of normalizing their weight. When they read my books or hear me say that they can lose weight and eat all that they want, they can't believe their eyes or ears. But that's exactly what you can do on the McDougal program for maximum weight loss. On my diet, you are encouraged to eat as much as you want, as often as you want. There is no calorie counting or complicated calculations. Okay? You can forget portion control forever. In fact, you are strongly encouraged to eat from an incredible variety of delicious foods. Meanwhile, you lose... Um, sorry. Meanwhile, you will lose weight. You will feel great and in no time will look great too. Well, that's the experience of hundreds of thousands of people who have followed my program, okay? So he's just going to go into now the next part. Misinformation has got you in trouble. So throughout the book, he's going to go through dispelling these um, this misinformation we've been given, okay? So for example, he talks about how in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, we were taught over and over that beef is the most excellent food we could eat. And so now science, and again, this is 1994. Now, latest science has proven that it's not true, okay? So, he talks about today, again, 1994, equally erroneous beliefs are being drummed into us. One of them is that olive oil is a health food. Okay, in fact, I'll bet you think of olive oil as good for you and sugar as poisonous. But when it comes to losing weight, you're wrong. So, I could just hear some sass in him. You're wrong. <laughs> so he goes into a thing about oils in here being that they're 100% fat. There are nine calories per gram of oil, four for sugar. Okay, so in fact, the fat is mostly, it's the most calorically dense food in nature. So I'll have to do videos on cal calorie density, but you can easily find videos on that on YouTube. And so he's just saying like, you know, if you want the most calorically dense food, most fattening thing out there, fat, oil, you know? When we look at what your body does with olive oil and sugar, we find that olive oil is even more harmful to your weight loss program because it is more easily stored as fat than is sugar. The body treats all fats as reserved fuel, which means they are stored for the day when you have insufficient carbohydrates to eat. Those fats are kept in your adipose tissues found mostly that are kept in your adipose tissues are found mostly under the surface of your skin and surrounding your organs. In other words, that fat makes you fatter. On the other hand, excess sugar is stored invisibly in your muscles and in your liver as glycogen or burned off as heat. As we will explore in greater detail later on, sugar is not readily converted into fat in your body and consequently doesn't affect your weight or appearance. Okay, so I think that this is a good place to like pause it and have a discussion about oil just in general. So I went looking cause I didn't find stuff. Maybe there is stuff further on. I've only read like thoroughly read up to about page 100 in the book. Um, so my goodness, my wind chimes are being really loud. I apologize. So, um, I went on to UC Davis's integrative medicine website. I was just searching for someone who wasn't just like me with an opinion, but somebody of authority. Um, or some place of authority to look into why oil is so bad for us. So this is, you know, that moment in a book club where you would say, well, I was interested in that. And so I looked further into it. So here's my thing. I've got my notes here. Okay. So why all, all oil is bad. Okay. So why all oils are bad. Calories are from fat. So hundred percent comes from fat. We already, that's already established here. 
Okay, processed food. There are processed food that are not, they're devoid of all nutrients except for a little note about vitamin K and E. Okay, so they slow down your blood's flow. They're just talking about the constriction and how thick it is and everything like that. So they depress your immune system. They damage blood vessels. They contribute to insulin resistance. They promote heart disease. And there was a bunch more information. These are just kind of the bulleted points here. Um, causes your red blood cells to clump up, limiting their ability to absorb and to deliver oxygen to our cells. And they impair our ability to stop the growth of cancer cells. So, is oil good for us? According to this, according to UC Davis and many other sources, nope. Okay. So, moreover, sugar tends to satisfy the appetite by filling the body's carbohydrate needs and replenishing glycogen stores. Fat does not quiet your hunger. So, and he goes into just about how if you keep eating fat, you still are craving the carbohydrates, and therefore, you're going to overeat, not just on the fat, but then you're going to have all those carbohydrates that your body desires, because later on he talks about, you know, it. we crave it for a reason, we need it, okay? So, he's saying, you know, he's not advocating to eat tons of sugar, but if you're going to eat one versus the other, you know, it's more dangerous to dip your, your bread in oil than it is to sprinkle some sugar on your cereal, okay? So going into the next section of chapter one, the McDougal program for good looks and life, okay? So he goes into here and he's explaining how, um, let's see, there was a part in here I was gonna specifically talk about, but maybe I'm wrong on what it is. But just going into the general stuff like that, how much weight you have to lose, he's assuming that people who are doing this program, specifically this program, have more than 30 pounds to lose. I definitely have more than 30 pounds to lose. It's kind of sad because some of these um, before and after stories in here, the people are, you know, like their starting stories are, starting weights are lower than mine and we're like the same height. So I'm like, oh, this woman's in her 60s and she weighs less than me now and that was her horrible before weight. So <laughs> I don't know, whatever. Okay, so he just kind of goes into a little bit about that. All right, so I have here star, so I'm going to assume I'm supposed to read this, okay? The major difference between the original McDougal program and the McDougal program for maximum weight loss is that the original diet allows a certain amount of flour, products, and vegetable foods that are richer in calories. He says he goes into more on that in Chapter 6. Okay, so a lot of confusion can be out there, like, what's the difference between the start solution and the maximum weight loss program? I've had my own confusion on that because I didn't own this book until after I started doing the maximum weight loss version of the program, which is ridiculous, but there's a lot of YouTube videos out there explaining it, and um, he has a little section in the search solution where he talks about basically maximizing it, and so it's kind of like a little snippet of this book compact into like two pages, and so that's what I was just mostly following. I keep looking over here because I'm hearing a weird sound like a bird is making a really weird sound over here so anyway I don't know what the microphone's picking up anyhow so the main difference he says here from his older programs because the search solution was published after this book was published so um, he's at the time of writing not referring to the start solution because that didn't exist that book didn't exist so his main difference between his original program and now this one the maximized one is that this one now has no um, amount of flour products allowed and there are vegetable foods that are you know no and I'm gonna assume they're things like avocados and olives and stuff like that the more high fat stuff okay so the weight loss program is safe and healthy and can be followed for the rest of your life now of course and he even goes into it here I'm not a medical expert but he is and even he says you should be following this with the advice of a doctor if you have medical issues, you know, obviously, you know, some diets are not safe because of underlying health issues. Now, a little short story. Um, when I did a talk with Kaiser Permanente for whole food plant-based advocating it, you know, they had kind of a, a group of people they invited and I was asked to speak for it because I had had such success just eating a vegan whole food plant-based diet. And then I specifically talked about the start solution on it. Um, there was a question because there are so much mis misinformation and confusion out there 
and I so often can feel so confused and frustrating. It's frustrating. Like, ugh, so many people say conflicting things. It frustrates you, right? So someone had had a little bit of frustration in their, their voice and said something like, you know, my husband is diabetic. You know, we're hearing carbs are really danger for, dangerous for him. Like, you know, type 2. He was a type 2 diabetic. And, um, you know insulin or I don't know what it was exactly but what I re my point is and why what I specifically remember was that there was a doctor and a nutritionist there uh, um and I think she was a nurse practitioner licensed dietitian so these were the these were the medical you know nutrition experts you know and then there was me the real person who's done it kind of thing and the doctor um who actually is mentioned in the um how Not to Die book by Dr. Greger. Um, so his, do his doctor Ha, and I've kind of become friends with his wife, Nina Ha, um, here in Bakersfield. And so he's the one that was leaving this. So it's kind of fun that he had a connection because was, he was actually mentioned by Dr. Greger. It's like all the little, unless you know these names, this would mean nothing to you. So anyway, um, Dr. Ha was the doctor, and I don't remember the nurse's name. I. I feel bad, but I don't know what her name was, but she was really lovely. <laughs> so anyway, Dr. Ha had said that it's so serious for some people that eating a whole food, plant-based diet, such as one like this, is so powerful that it could be deadly for someone who's taking insulin, an insulin-dependent diabetic, if they were to start a program like this having not told their doctor and they take their regular insulin, he said that literally, depending on certain things, we said if I knew for a fact someone was going to be seriously falling it to a T, you know, I'd have a serious discussion with them, I would have them half their insulin instantly because it's that effective in, you know, regaining your health. It's that quick that the insulin that their body would be able to make and their, the insulin that they would be getting would be so over the top that it could kill them. So it's like, whoa, I mean, I'm probably mashing that up wrong and saying it wrong. So if you are anyone with an underlying health condition, you should definitely talk to a doctor. And that's really hard to do right now because good luck getting a hold of a doctor. If you're anywhere in the situation I've been in where I've tried to contact a doctor during this, not going to happen. But if you're just doing some research right now because you're pri priming your brain for it, getting ready, gearing up to do something amazing for your body, good for you. That's exactly what I did um, before starting. I kind of spent three months of just kind of like marinating and in information and getting myself to the point of I'm going to do this thing <laughs> before I started again in January this year, 2020. So, okay. Anyway, anyhow, going on. Make sure you talk to a doctor is what he's saying here. So, okay. So nobody can get rid of all that fat is the heading of the next section. And he goes into Carl Lewis, the athlete, and how even he, with all of his massive amount of running and everything he's done with Olympics, et cetera, et cetera, Runner's World Magazine, et cetera, et cetera, he was finding it hard to keep the weight off. And so here's someone who's running, I mean, running burns an excessive amount of calories. And even this person could not outrun fork, right? So um, he actually meets Dr. McDougal because they were going to be doing an interview together. I think they were on some TV show. It goes into it in here. And um, they talk a little bit and he decides to follow the program and he does great and he even mentions that he's been doing the program in another interview for something else like maybe like Sports Illustrated or something or Runner's World. You know, he said um, that he encouraged other friends to do it and they went on to do like some of their best work or something like that. So there's quite a few stories like this now, but this was probably more, ooh, a big deal then. Okay, so he just basically says that, look, no matter what, no matter who you are, if you're not eating the right foods, you risk being overweight, no matter what you're doing physically to undo all the excessive calories. So, okay, now, my next thing I went into researching. So if you go into, just kind of he wraps that whole thing up and for my book, it's on page eight. He's saying that today, 40% of Americans are overweight. 
When children are eliminated from the numbers, we see that nearly two-thirds of all adult Americans exceed the ideal weight for their height. 25% are clinically obese. As long as we go on eating an overabundance of fat, Americans will continue to be overweight. So, interesting here. And again, this was 1994. So, how bad do you think the stats are for Americans now? America, the land of fat and obese people. Um, okay, so I looked it up on the CDC website. I was probably the only one researching CDC information not related to COVID-19. <laughs> so, um, okay, so 2015-2016 stats on overweight and obesity in America. So for adults over the age of 20 years old, age of 20 or older, I should say, 39.8%, we'll round it to 40%, 40% of Americans age 20 or older are obese in the United States. That's a lot. It was 25% in 1994. It is now 40%, almost double. So yeah, we clearly are not doing well, are we? Okay, and then the, um, sorry, my lips are really dry right now. The percentage, get a minute to drink my water. The percentage of those of us who are at least just overweight. So this is definitely me and my category. 71.6%, so 72% of Americans ages 20 or older are overweight. So it went from 40% to 72% almost doubled as well. So both of them have almost doubled since the publishing in 1994 of this book. And I thought that that was, you know, interesting, sad. And we need to change that, right? But we can't change other people, we can only change ourselves. Okay, so eating fat, but craving carbohydrates. Okay, he says in here, adults need approximately 35 times more carbohydrates for energy than we need protein for growth. Let me read that again because we always hear so much stuff in here in our daily about how much protein we need. We need lots more protein. Everything's protein enhanced. Even for vegans, it's pea powder protein enhanced protein. Adults need approximately 35 times more carbohydrates for energy than we need protein for growth. And 800 times more carbohydrates than fat. So think about the people who are on really high, really high protein diets and low carbohydrate diets, or the really high fat, moderate protein, next to no carbohydrate diets. All right, so for example, adult men who need 20 grams of protein per day to maintain healthy cell replacement and repair. They need about 700 grams of carbohydrates a day to meet energy requirements, and they need about three grams of fat. I, when I first started doing the starch solution, I tried finding anywhere and everywhere how much fat do we need, like, or how much are we allowed to have. And you have people out there like doing the 80-10-10 thing, so 10% of your calories is coming from fat, but I couldn't find anywhere where Dr. McDougall actually said anything about how many grams of fat or percent of fat we we're allowed. So this is kind of the first, and it doesn't refer to women. There's a whole thing on why it's hard for women to lose weight. But I mean, maybe we can have six grams of fat as women and, and, we, and meet our needs, I'm gonna guess, by just doubling it, because women do have more body fat than men. But I don't know, I haven't found that information. If you have found information where Dr. McDougall actually says that, please comment below and link wherever you found that, if you can, I would really appreciate that. Um, okay, so carbohydrates are the most efficient form of energy that we can consume. Foods that are rich in carbohydrates are vegetables, whole grains, and fruit. Even while you're eating fat and protein, you're craving carbohydrates. Now, if anyone's ever done a low-carb diet, yeah, you crave carbohydrates. I did Atkins in 2003. I lost 20 pounds really fast. But I was so sick and tired of eating the food. I was miserable, literally miserable. At first it was like, this is great. I can have all the cheese I want. Um, but I didn't know then how much I had a dairy issue. So I felt miserable. And I already was kind of vegetarian-ish at that time of my life, though I had been eating just white meat. 
So I was doing literally chicken, cheese, and eggs over and over, and I was miserable. Yeah, I don't miss that. <laughs> so anyway, the McDougal program for maximum weight loss does exactly the opposite of a carbohydrate deficient diet. It gives you what you need most, carbohydrates, while minimizing what you need least, fat, causing you to lose weight. Because the carbohydrates that come in foods that are whole, such as whole grains and a wide variety of vegetables. I read that wrong. Because the carbohydrates come in foods that are whole, such as whole grains and a wide variety of vegetables. The McDougal diet provides both weight loss and health improvement. Sounds good, right? He goes into a whole bunch of people and people he's helped, the average weight loss of women um, versus men in his um, a live-in program he was doing at the time of writing this book. And so um, he does go into the people who follow the program lose between 6 and 15 pounds a month until they approach the trim body, until they approach a trim body weight, okay? So I have been more on the lower side of it, but that's okay. I'm happy. And the truth is, as I'm reading this, I'm finding out there's some things I've been doing that I shouldn't be doing on the maximum, you know, version of it. So I have room for improvement. Okay, so he goes into here a set of simple rules. There's some personal stories, and I think it'd be a good video to kind of go over all the personal video, like personal triumphant, triumphant, personal triumph over weight loss issues stories. It'd be kind of a fun one to do it from this book and the start solution. But that's for another video, but trust me, lots of people lost a lot of weight. Okay, so a simple set of rules. My approach is simple to understand and highly effective. I lay out the program in extensive detail in chapter 6 and chapter 15. I provide a comprehensive list of, list of packaged and processed foods. So I'll go into that later on. Okay, so the foods you should eat include the following. So these are the food, foods you should be eating. The good for us ones. All whole grains and whole grain cereals such as brown rice, corn, oatmeal, barley, millet, and wheat berries, mini packaged green cereals like puff grains and other healthful cereals. I didn't know we could have cereal. Squashes such as acorn, butternut, butternut, buttercup. Buttercup? I didn't know buttercup was an actual squash. Oh, interesting. Pumpkin and zucchini. Root vegetables such as potatoes, sweet potatoes, and yams. Legumes such as peas, split peas, black eyed peas, string beans, and such beans as chickpeas, lentils, and adzuki, nav navy, pinto, and black beans. If I said that wrong, I'm sorry. Okay, green and yellow vegetables such as collard greens, broccoli, kale, mustard greens, cabbage, various types of lettuce, and a water and watercress, celery, cauliflower, carrots, asparagus, and tomato. Okay, so um. Somewhere in here we goes into talking about carrots and he didn't put carrots under the list of being a starch. So I thought that was interesting, but it's not right here. He does that. Um, fruit, such as apples, bananas, berries, grapefruit, oranges, peaches, and pears, limited to two servings a day, okay? And for most people, simple sugar, salt, and spices used sparingly at the table rather than in cooking. Okay, so that's what we need to be having. It's so pretty much everything else, nope, okay? So if it's a really low, low calorie, low in fat vegetable, it's okay if it wasn't listed here. Okay. So these and other foods on the diet make it one of the most interesting food programs on the planet. So remember I was saying chicken, cheese, and eggs over and over? Not interesting. <laughs> Once you learn how to use spices, herbs, and various cooking methods, you cannot help feeling nourished and satisfied. Okay. So while you're enjoying the above, you, you have to avoid... And there's a long list of what to avoid, so I'll put it to you this way. All animal products. All of them. And then no dried fruit, no fruit juices, and all flour products, such as breads, bagels, and pretzels. The less the food is processed, the better it is for weight loss. Flour products are composed of fragments of grain or relatively small particles, which increase absorption and slow weight loss. I was not having any flour other than when I was blending oat, um, like oats up to get a flour. Not allowed to do that. Okay, so feast becomes special again. So it just kind of goes into a thing about how, you know, kings and queens, they were fat people because they had abundant supply of food and how, you know, 
people that eat like kings and queens all the time and look like them too. Um, we don't just have special treats on special holidays. Like Halloween and Valentine's Day were for candy and you know, ham was for maybe Easter and Christmas and turkey was for Thanksgiving. But now we eat like every day is Halloween, Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day, Easter, Christmas, and whatever other major big food eating holidays, barbecue days, you know, that other people have in their cultures and stuff. I know Thanksgiving is not celebrated around the world here. Here and in Canada, they have it, but you get the point. Eating like every day is a really special occasion, not a good thing. And it's clearly taking its toll on the American people. Okay, so he goes into kind of like what's going to be coming up in future chapters. It's important that you understand the scientific and medical rationale behind health food choices and the McDougall program. Therefore, I've detailed in the next five chapters to describe um, describing the mechanisms by which weight is gained and lost. Okay, so that's what he goes into. And then at the back, there's a ton of recipes and stuff like that. So whew, we discussed chapter one. So I apologize, you probably looked at the top of my head that's needing to go get my roots fi fixed up at the uh, hair salon sooner than later. But you know, hey, I'm staying home, I'm doing my part to uh, not potentially catch or spread a disease right now, so <laughs> it's a virus. Anyway, I hope that this was helpful to you. I highly encourage you to go buy the book if you can, you know, if you can get it delivered to your home during this time of being shut in maybe, or if you are watching this video months or years after, you know, the pandemic of um, coronavirus, COVID-19, and you are like, what is she going on about? Oh yeah, that thing. Because I'm looking forward to the day though. That was a long gone memory, right? Um, I highly recommend you get the book. I bought it at Barnes and Noble this year. I saw back here. I usually stick the receipts in them. Oh, what day did I buy it? Does it even say? It says it's valid on 2-1. So I obviously bought it at the very end of January. So I've had it and I just really haven't been reading it. And a couple of you said that you have it, but you haven't been reading it either. So this would be helpful to you. So I'm going to be doing chapter two soon. Um, depending on what the feedback is on this, I might adjust and change how I do this. But I thank you for watching. Be healthy, stay safe, and I'll talk to you next, talk to you next time. <laughs> Bye.